The Teams Premium add-on license brings a whole new set of features to Microsoft Teams. In this video, we're going to focus in on those new features available for customer engagement through webinars and virtual appointments. If you don't yet have Teams Premium, or you're looking for help understanding it or to get started, check out this video first and then come back to see this one. First off, we're going to look at webinars. Teams Premium adds a few valuable features to the existing webinars experience in Teams. If you don't have a Teams Premium license, then you can still set up webinars and use most of the features available. But to use those Teams Premium specific features, such as registration restrictions, the webinar organizer must have the license for Teams Premium. So let's walk through setting up a webinar. So if I come up to my new meeting option here and click on webinar, see I can add a webinar title and all of the normal information that I would want, including selecting the event access. So once I've got that saved, I can head on into my presenter bios, I can edit information here, and I can theme my page as I might want to. Now do bear in mind that this new experience that you're seeing for the webinar is the new webinars experience, which is common across the Teams base license and Teams Premium. So this experience here is not a Teams Premium feature. Um, this is just a new experience that has been turned on in Teams. What is new in Teams Premium are some of the features that you have under configuration. Under your base license, the only thing that you can do in this configuration is change the capacity of your meeting. But with the Teams Premium options, I can require manual approval of registrants, I can enable waitlist for the event, and I can limit my registration date so I can only have it open for a period of time. Um, the options in relation to the form and customizing the form are exactly the same between Teams Premium and uh, the base Teams license. So I'm going to go ahead and publish my site. So you can see I have this new look page that I could have customized more if I wanted to. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click register. And you can see my registration has been processed. Now jumping back into Teams, let's take a look at our attendees. So you can see I have one in here pending approval. And I'm going to go ahead and approve this attendee. And you can see I now have this person registered here. So the other option that we've got in Teams Premium is to set up a waitlist for our event. So you can see here that our event is full, um, so it gives me the option to join a waitlist, and I can go ahead and put in another email address. And then jumping back to my management view, you can see that I now have one waitlisted person. I don't have the ability from here to simply push a waitlisted person into my event. But if I go back and up my capacity and save this, look into my attendee status, and you can see now that that person who was waitlisted is now pending approval. So I'm going to go ahead and change the date of this event because I want to try the uh, registration limiting this. And now I'm going to come down to registration configuration and say limit registration date. And I'm not going to allow any registration until tomorrow at, let's say, 10 a.m. and 9 a.m. there. And you can see now it tells me that when registration will open. So that's the new Teams webinar setup experience that includes some new features and options to help you manage your webinars that are specific to Teams Premium. However, for anyone who tried Teams webinars before around mid-2022, the new experience of setting up webinars and using them is going to appear quite different. And it's important to realize that everyone, no matter their level of Teams license, now gets access to this new experience. Please do not think that you need a Teams Premium license to set up webinars. Webinars are still included. You just need the Teams Premium license to take advantage of those small number of Teams Premium specific webinars features. If this video adds value for you, please do click the like button. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this on digital transformation for small businesses, Microsoft 365 and the Microsoft Power Platform, then please do subscribe to the channel. In Teams, a webinar is just really an ordinary Teams meeting with a particular set of settings turned on to make it more of a webinar experience. Let's take a look at the settings window you can access from your meeting to see what additional settings and features are available once you deploy your Teams Premium license. So under here, you can see some of the features that have been added by the Teams Premium license. The first big one that stands out is manage what attendees see. So this is one of the features that's been highlighted as a difference in the Teams Premium webinar experience. 
I also have an option down here of enable green room, which is another feature that has been highlighted. And lastly, I have options for who can record and enable end-to-end -end encryption, which are both locked on this page. So now let's jump over to our webinar and take a look at how this works. For this example, I have an account with a Teams Premium license that set up the webinar, another internal user without a Teams Premium license who is a fellow presenter, and an external guest user who is an attendee using the Edge browser. We're going to start in the green room. So here we are in the green room and you can see I've got my uh, my account here that has joined. I've got my account on my laptop that is joined down here. And you can see that we're in the green room because we have this start meeting option up here. And while we have everyone in the green room, um, any attendees of the event actually see this instead. So we can go ahead and plan things, get things set up. Um, I can share something from PowerPoint Live or share my screen or whatever I may do. And that's there, so it's possible to run this green room, run through the slides. You can have up to 100 people connected into this at any given time from the point of view of presenters. So you can see here, I've got this set up so you can both see the Teams window that is the presenter and you can see the Teams window that is the person trying to join the meeting. Um, so let's just click on start meeting and we'll see what happens. So we're going to start the meeting. One people will enter the meeting. Okay, start meeting. And you can see on the, on the attendees screen that they are now seeing just the presentation. So the reason that they're seeing just the presentation is because we also check the box to turn on manage what the attendee sees. So what we're seeing from now on is that experience of managing what the attendee sees. So say I want to uh, put myself over on screen, I can right click on myself and I can go to bring on screen. And I then appear on screen for myself here, uh, but I also appear on screen for my attendee over here. Um, or I can add both people on screen as I need. So this is quite a neat way of managing the experience of what someone is going to see. Um, I, I will say this experience isn't entirely set up to work right with something like PowerPoint Live because you can see that as the owner of this meeting, I actually don't have the ability to get this PowerPoint Live off screen. I can move my participants, my presenters onto the screen with the PowerPoint, but I actually can't get rid of it. To get rid of it, I have to go over to my laptop and I can click stop sharing. And you can see that now I have nothing on my screen. So if I want to bring someone on screen, you can see that I've got Adele here, or Adele's account at least. Uh, that's me there, not Adele, but um, you can see that I've got Adele's account on screen and I can blank out the screen again there for my, uh, my attendees. So there's one important feature I haven't covered here today that I think is possibly the most useful advance Microsoft has made to webinars in Teams Premium. That's the option to send email communications to registered attendees. It doesn't say this on the Teams Premium product page, but the product announcement highlighted that this will not be available until sometime in March. So if that's the killer webinars feature you're looking for, you might want to hold off until then. The issue of pre-event communication is one that's close to my heart, as I've tried to tackle this before using Power Platform. In this video here, I show you how to use Power Platform to work with Teams webinar data in the background. But the bad news is that if you use the new Teams webinar setup experience as opposed to just turning on event registration, this solution seems to break. So we are all now waiting for this March update to be able to email our registrants again, unless you know some other workaround for this that you can drop in the comments below. Teams Premium also brings some changes to virtual appointments, which is really just the appointments that are created and managed in the existing bookings app that's part of Microsoft 365 outside of Teams. So let's take a look at these changes. So we're familiar with the bookings app that we can grab from office.com and start with our bookings. We have our personal bookings page. 
And then if we create a shared bookings page, create a new one here. And let's add a couple of people into this. So here is our normal bookings page. And really the only thing that you can see from here that is changed by Teams Premium is that in our notifications area, this text messaging feature to notify those who are booking with you of the upcoming appointment is going to soon require a Teams Premium license. So where are the other things that are talked about with the virtual appointments? So if we jump into Teams, what you're going to want is actually a new app. If we come down to the three dots here and we select the virtual appointments app, you can see we can connect to our existing calendar or create a new calendar. So we're going to connect to an existing calendar. And so here's our bookings calendar view. And the two additions that we have that are specific to Teams Premium, or at least will be specific to Teams Premium, are our queue and our analytics. So if I open up another calendar where I have had some activity, you can see that here I do get some analytics information. And I can also see some information on my queue. So one of the interesting features that we do have uh, with this is an on-demand feature where you can actually publish an on-demand type of service to your calendar. And you have to do that from the virtual appointments app. You can't do it from the bookings website. But then if we head over to our bookings page, you can see that I have an option here for a scheduled appointment, but I also have an option to see a staff member now. And it is considerate of the time of day, because if I select this, it says that I'm not actually in business hours, so I can't see anyone. But there is an option there to simply have a queue of people, and when you're able to get to them, um, you get to them. I haven't implemented this anywhere or really tried it out live myself at this point. So uh, your mileage may vary with it uh, because there doesn't seem to be much you can do in the background to really deal with situations where there may not be someone available to see a booking or other situations that may come up. Um, so I would just be careful with that option and be sure that you fully test out your potential use of it to not have a situation where you've got potential clients or existing clients just sitting in a meeting waiting for you. The other thing that is highlighted about virtual appointments is the fact that you can join directly from a web browser and that works really well, but it's not actually a feature of just Teams Premium. It is now a feature of booking. So just be aware of that. You don't need the Teams Premium license in order to get that capability. As a customer working with virtual appointments, your experience is the same as anyone who has used the Bookings app experience. So once you have booked your session, let's take a look at the experience of joining your virtual appointment. So back to another split screen here, you can see that we have a virtual appointment set up with the join email on the right and Teams on the left. So what we're going to do is to uh, join and then join from our appointment. As you can see, the first thing you're asked is to put in your name. So I'm just gonna put in name here. It then checks in. It requires you to have your video and mic available and then you can join to the lobby. I get a waiting in lobby notification and then it connects. So you can see I'm trying to join everything together from the same computer so I'm having some issues with video here uh, but this does work really well um, so long as you're not trying to do everything in the same place. Now, something that's important to point out with this, if we just take a look at the appointments that are available here. So you can see that the option here is checked for have attendees join from a web browser. So you will have noted that it didn't ask to open the appointment in Teams when I joined as the virtual appointment guest. If you don't have this option selected, then it's gonna give you the normal experience of 
giving you the option of opening Teams or joining from the web browser. If you want to select this option, you have to do so from the Virtual Appointments app because it isn't exposed in the Bookings app interface. Something to note is that Virtual Appointments don't have any baked-in payment facility currently. But remember that you can now take payments directly in Teams. Check out this video that shows you how to get this set up and hopefully, eventually, these capabilities will be better integrated into virtual appointments to offer a more seamless experience for the organizer and customer. So during this video, we've covered about half the areas where Teams Premium makes changes to the base Teams experience. But these are the ones that are really going to make a difference to you if you use Teams in a customer facing manner. In my mind, any one of these individual features could be worth $10 a month to you if you need it, or if it helps reduce reliance on a paid functionality elsewhere, such as Zoom's webinars package, which costs far, far more. There are probably few companies where this set of features justifies deploying Teams Premium across the whole organization though. In my next video on this topic, which I'll link here once it's up, I'll look at the other side of the Teams Premium coin with features that are more focused on your internal meetings experience and data security. This is really the feature set that might make Teams Premium something you want all your users to have, rather than just a focused subset who have particular needs. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.